Hi there. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna make that work. So I decided to play Tank Mechanic Simulator again because it's a game I haven't played in a pretty long time, but I have played on this channel before. You can go back and find the video, uh, dated sometime 2022 probably, actually maybe even earlier. Either way, it had been a hot minute since I touched the game, and since then they had released quite a few DLCs and expansions, adding new tanks, including the Sherman DLC, which... I'm the guy. I'm literally the guy. Uh, that's literally, they literally made it for me. But I decided to share the experience with my chat on a live stream. In case you didn't know from my 20k subs video, I do live stream weekly, uh, Saturdays, 5 p.m. EST. Every week I go live on the second channel, Edit320 Live, and we play all sorts of games. Usually not always tank related, but when they are, it's a lot of fun. And I figured I'd do something fun, which I haven't done before, which was take a live stream and cut it up and post it on this channel, because I figure why not? We played a tank related game. I thought it made sense. If you like what you see in this video, go check out Editor320 Live and subscribe. Everyone on the Discord who joins in for the streams absolutely loves it, and uh, we, we have a fun time. And if you're not going to subscribe to the live channel, at least join the Discord, or subscribe to this channel if you're not already. You know, I don't know, hit the- leave a like, hit the bell, all that fun stuff. I literally got yelled at in the Discord by people for- I made a joke about hitting the bell, and everybody in the Discord was like- It's like- like a bunch of wolves, like piranhas, smelling blood in the water, dude, it's insane. But hey, can't blame a man for trying, I suppose. Anyways, enjoy this cut-up VOD that was originally four hours. I've cut down to 30 minutes for your enjoyment and entertainment. We have some good times, some scary times, and some Sherman education time, which hopefully- is always nice. I'm gonna stop talking. Enjoy the video. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate you doing the intro for the stream. Uh, you know, every now and then I gotta call in a favor. You know, every now and then I gotta ask for help. Uh, it's it's tough running a one-man show like this, so appreciate you, Chair, for... Tomorrow I'll become a patron. Oh, thank you, Checo. He's gonna be a patron. That's awesome. Donate to the Patreon if you guys haven't already. Um, okay. Welcome to Tank Enthusiast Reacts. Just kidding, this is just Tank Mechanic Simulator. So this game has a, the DLC, the Sherman DLC. Now, I purchased it quite a while ago, but then never like actually bothered to play it. So today we're gonna rectify that and I figured, well, who better to do it with than, than chat, you know? You guys, are, you guys are my best friends in the whole world. Parasocial relationships aside, you know, I really do think of all of you as, as my friends and my children as well. We established this on Fallout that I'm your father all of your collective collectives dad and so you know i want to make sure that i look after you guys so i want to do stuff with my kids you know i want to toss the toss the baseball in the front yard and um i teach you how to shave and like uh you know i don't really know what else you do with your dad my dad didn't do any of that stuff with me i'm self-taught on all those things i taught myself how to throw a baseball it's really hard this guy's kind of like germa he's funny <laughs> i just have to be holy shit the b hops oh my god Holy fuck! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Oh shit, I got caught on the fucking desk. Man's moving so fast, it's killing the bit rate. Oh shit! <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry, chat. So, uh, we need to restore a tank, but specifically, we need to restore a Sherman. I was doing a bunch of tutorial stuff. I did a little mining off camera. And then another Panzerkampfwagen 3 off M, let me know quick. This is really urgent. I'm gonna decline that one. I really don't much care. Tank extraction opportunity. <gasps> we know where a hidden tank is. We won't make it though. Can you help us? Let's give this a shot. Just dudes being bros. Yeah, that's like corn. That's what I'm saying. That's what this. That's what the Edit 320 livestream experience has always been about. Just a bunch of guys being dudes. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, I put on the handbrake by accident. <laughs> Ignore that. Don't cosplay as my father. <laughs> Gone. An apparition. Not in your life. Which one, bro? That's uh, okay. I'm your dad now, so it all worked out. Honestly, your dad was probably a loser anyways. Like, at least compared to me, he probably wasn't nearly as cool as me. I mean, look what I'm doing right now. Did you and your dad ever go, like, 
uh, tank hunting? No, probably not. What kind of Sherman are we looking for? I don't know. I mean, I don't even know if this is going to be a Sherman, to be quite frank with you. Look at how freaking small, like... It's probably because I have my FOV set, like, way, way zoomed out. Because that's how I'm in real life, chat. Like, like I see, I see the world, like, like stretched way out because um, of all the cocaine. Chat. Chat, I'm scared. Sherman! Sherman! Where is the Sherman? Ah! Oh, maybe we should get Kermit the Frog to help us with our search. Hey, Kermit. Kermit, can you help us? Yeah, sure thing. Sure thing, Etta. Uh, let me give it a quick call. Come here, Shermy, Shermy, Shermy. My little Sherman friend. <sighs> Kermit, I think you should I think we should hurry this up. Okay, yeah, sure thing. Oh, Shermy! Shermy! Oh, are there any Sherman tanks around here? That's not Kermit the Frog. I lost it. Chad, I lost it. I'm a fucking, I'm a fucking fraud. I'm a sham. Kermit the Frog was never here on on live stream on the Edit 320 live stream. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, Chad. I lied to you. I know that we're gonna die here any second now from the Slender Man while we're searching for the Sherman tank. So I just wanted to let you guys know. I just wanted to fess up that I lied. Okay, Kermit the Frog wasn't on stream. I'm sorry. I was about to say, Jesus Christ, man. Ah. Uh. <sighs> we'll sell it. Let's accept this offer. Chat, now that now that we know what we're doing, this is gonna be better, okay? Look at all these boys. Look at all these hot, steamy men who are helping us helping us dig. Woo! T34. T34 85. We have run into but there's a tank ready to be extracted. Let's just go. Woo! <gasps> oh Chatamus! An M2! M2. You know what that means. It's probably a Greyhound. Yay! <sighs> Tank extraction opportunity. All right, Chad, do we go on one more excavation and try to find one on our own, or do we just take Mike's offer for an M4A2. <laughs> Excavation, Mike sounds shady as F. Extraction, gambling is always better. All right, you guys wanna do the extraction. Let's try it. Thompson Pog. This is, oh, <gasps> chat! Look at this! Look at this, chat, oh my God. Holy shit! Look at this, chat, the gamble paid off! Good job, oh my God. Gambling always pays off. Dude, literally, dude, 90% of gamblers quit right before they're about to hit it big. Holy shit, dude. And it's never been more true than it is here today with you guys on the Edit 320 live stream. Ooh, it's an M4. It is, that is true. Ooh, these doors are a little tall, I feel like. The proportions are a little off, but that's okay. That's okay. Oh, wow. And yeah, this would have opened up. So you get more access to here, the exhaust and whatnot. Yeah, the exhaust on the Shermans came uh, down through the top or down through underneath. Yep, right there. Because uh, if you have exhaust that faces upwards, your exhaust plumes can go up and it can give away your position. So you want exhaust plumes to be pushed down. Um, this is also, I guess this is an engine hood. Oh, this is what's under here. I've always wondered. So yeah, this is one of the identifying factors of like an M4. Um, everybody who's watching the stream knows this because you're watching my stream, which means you've seen my Sherman video, but still. I think the radiator is here. Oh, actually, yeah, it would be because part of what was nice about the radiator on tanks like this pulls air through the tank. So it, like it, it creates like a cool, it almost creates like a draft that comes through the tank and almost is like makeshift air conditioning. Um, so a lot of tanks were designed that way. And then there's the, uh, that right there is the fire extinguisher system. Oh wait, actually, yeah, wait, hold on. It said it. Oh yeah. Fire extinguisher system handle. Fuck. Yeah. They got that. They know all that. Yeah, man. All right. You know, they did their homework. This is good. I wonder how like how the fuck does this work, you know? Like, how do you get in here when you've got this? <laughs> and that's, oh, it fed through the periscope hole. Is that true? Is that really how they did it? The name is slightly wrong. It's called the, the T-34 Calliope, but the T-34 specifically refers to this launch. This rocket system on top was called T-34. The, the tank itself was, was still Sherman. Like, this is still an M4 Sherman. So, like, I don't know if they officially refer to it in documents as, like, a T-34 Calliope. I think they would have just called it an M4 with T-34 launchers. Like, I, I don't know why they wouldn't do it that way. They may not have. I, I, I don't know. 
Oh my god, there's barely anything left of this radio. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Step one is de-rusting. This is what you get, chat. This is it. So you, you sat there and watched me dig around in empty space for two hours just so that you can now watch me go around a tank with a with a rust de-rusting tool. Ooh, wow, look at this. Yep. So there's the drive shaft that comes through the tank at the weird angle. Yeah, look at how detailed this interior. Like even compared to the uh, material the interiors of the other tanks in the game, like this is so much more detailed compared to what they did before. There's the the spawns and ammo racks. The shells don't quite fit in them like at all actually. <laughs> that is Traverse motor. What is that? Yeah, oh, it's like a generator. Oh, is that the little, oh, this is the little Joe. And that's what this was for. This was, this was fuel for the little Joe, that's right. So the troops would call it little Joe, but there was, this was an auxiliary generator that was in the Shermans. When the tank is turned off and the main engine isn't running, you could keep this on for like turret traverse or whatever else you wanted to have power for, like keeping the lights on in the tank or the uh, radio and whatnot, stuff you needed power for. And it also generated a little bit of heat. A lot of times in the cold or at night, the, t the tank would be shut off, but they'd keep little Joe running to keep the tank interior uh, warm and stuff during like nighttime. Oh, and there's the fire extinguisher valves wow man yeah th this has way more way more detail than uh, any of the other tank models in the game that i've ever seen this is a big step up for these guys if future dlcs and like you know future tanks that they add to this game are going to be of similar quality and levels of detail then i actually genuinely might be i might be purchasing them because they really got all the all the little the little nicks and knocks bips and bops that little strip right there that is uh, Alco, if I'm not mistaken. So I think this is an Alco produced American locomotive company uh, produced, produced Sherman. Fun fact, they also produced composite Shermans. It wasn't just Chrysler. I was like blown away. I like literally, I was in my chair staring at my monitor, reading up on all this stuff. And uh, I came across like Alco produced composite Shermans. And I was like, wait a minute, it wasn't just Chrysler. And I, I pooped my pants. Let's strip this tank, bro. Let's strip. Let's strip live on stream. Oh no, I can't get out now. Oh, oh, help! Oh, I'm okay. All right, this is where you lose me. I'll admit, this is where I'm gonna start getting, like, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about because I am not, like, I have the general idea of how, like, cars and stuff work, but not an expert. I'm just gonna rip the drive shaft out. Yeah, sure, why not, I say. Generator pulley, the uh, V-built. Generator, so that's probably, like, hmm, I don't know what that generator would be for. No big deal. Oh my gosh, look at all these gears! The Sherman had, it was a five-speed transmission, if I'm not mistaken. What did I miss? Um, just me rambling, as I normally do. Edit, the generator is literally to run the electrical systems of the tank. Day one, attempt three of asking daddy if he'll play the medic theme. Do you want, do you guys want the medic theme right now? We can do the medic theme right now. Time to practice medicine. All right, chat, let's dismantle this differential housing. Let's go. Oh yeah. This is action packed. Look at that. Whoa, did you see that bolt? It, it came out, we took it off. This is, that's impossible. You can't remove these bolts without taking the suspension off. Ooh, that actually seems like a flaw in the design. Oh guys, here we go. It's about to get exciting, you ready? Here we go. Oh, it's about to come off. Whoa, it's the entire thing. If you guys don't like this, you can blame the guy in chat who asked for it. Ball bearings, final drive gears, the ball bearing B, the final drive B, the um the erm the uh erm where the fuck are you supposed to i was about to like where where are we going here all right ball bearing b drive axle oh the brake shaft of course as we all know and the brake covers duh you mean you gotta you know you can't have those lying around ball bearing c we're doing it boys we're doing it gear uh uh gear gear other side gear front drive axle gear that was it you nearly just made me spit water all over my instrument, bro. Bro, what are you talking about? This music is fire? Thanks, dude. This, uh, I made that music myself. TF2 music actually does kind of go hard. You know what? I'm actually not going to lie to you right now. This actually may have been a really good call. Yes, but you need an actual generator geared to the engine when the tank is running order power. Okay, I didn't want to say it out loud. Are you saying that the generator that we took out on the bottom there um, is, are you saying that that performs the function of the alternator where, when the engine is running? Okay. But yeah, I saw that. I saw a generator and saw that it was connected to the transmission and everything else. And I was like, oh, like, is that an alternator? I, I didn't know for sure. Um, but okay, I mean, that makes sense. I don't know why you wouldn't just use an alternator on the engine. Oh, well, you know what? For the Sherman, they may have done that because they use such a wide variety of engines. 
on the Sherman. So they put the alternator somewhere else. So you didn't have to, or maybe because they just needed something bigger that you couldn't fit on an engine because it's a fucking tank and it needs a lot of power. You know, boys, tank mechanics, it's a simple laugh. It's a lot of uh, screwing and bolting and making sure everything fits. Because if it don't fit, then it won't work. My daddy told me that a long time ago. This is really cool. This is giving me an insight as like, yeah, how they attached the uh, the T-34. They did a lot more than I thought. Which sounds weird, because obviously, yeah, if you're going to attach a big-ass rocket launching system to your tank, you're going to have to make a couple of modifications at least. That's the thing with tanks. Is like, even the most simple modification, like, it's, it's still a lot of stuff, you know? Like, there's still a lot of pieces and bits and all that to, to these things, which, like, makes it even more impressive when you find that they made these modifications or upgrades or whatever it is, like, so quickly. There's uh, the radio, all the different shells for the 75. It looks like we're actually missing, we're entirely missing the breech. I, I don't know how the breech somehow is missing, but the barrel is not. Or, like, this entire assembly isn't missing. I don't know how somebody managed to scrap to take the breech, but not anything else. The loader side, yeah, he's got the browning with him. These boxes would hold all sorts of little personal items, like spare periscopes or um, rations or spare stuff. A lot of spares for things, because obviously stuff breaks. Like all these little boxes, box H, box lid, F, and G. Uh, these ones I think were for ammunition, yeah. These would also be ammo. Yep, underneath. It's like a double folding door. They did it on the easy eights too. And then that's the hatch that you pick stuff out of. Oil line, okay, so this is an oil mechanism. They had a couple different mechanisms for the power traverse. Yeah, there's hydraulic. So like oil hydraulic, they had an electric version as well. Then according to the chieftain, the oil gear system was the was the one that people liked the most. It was the most preferred. <gasps> demo man, what makes me a good demo man? Well, if I were a bad demo man, I wouldn't be sitting here discussing it with you now, would I? Um, I think that's about everything. We really stripped this whole thing dry. All right, well, we have a completely stripped Sherman. And yeah, I think Half Life is probably going to be one of the, one of the next big playthroughs on this channel. Ooh, some this is some Marasmus type shit, bro. Man, the time is 2 and 9, I should go to sleep. Yeah, honestly, Comrade Dummy, you, uh, or Comrade Clumsy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Comrade Clumsy, I didn't mean to call you dumb, but you are dumb for still being here when literally all I'm doing is just methodically disassembling every little piece on a Sherman whilst listening to Team Fortress 2 music. <laughs> is this what you thought you'd be spending your 2 a.m. doing? <laughs> is this what you thought you'd spend, you would spend your 2 a.m. doing? Listening to this music, watching me disassemble a Sherman's engine. Clown stream. <laughs> Welcome to the clown stream, guys. Oh, that's a Germa bit, isn't he? Doesn't Germa do the... But he has a better one than I do. This is also, by the way, in a gross oversimplification of the sandblasting process. So these are all the parts that we just stripped from the Sherman. So, like, either way, we have to select all of them and outsource the repairs. Painted, we're just gonna go all the way. And it's gonna cost us six grand, but we are literally incredibly rich and that's damn near nothing to us. There it is, and then buy missing parts. So let's also do that. So now we're just gonna put all the parts that we need that we don't already have into our shopping cart, which is a fucking lot, 38 grand worth. And we're just gonna buy that. Lads, he ha he's halfway done. We need to hang on. We need to have faith. We need to spend some money and then we pick it off mangoes off the trees in Tahiti, bro. All right, chat. We are we are on the we're on the back end now. Let this music get you like determined. You know, you, you furrow your brows, get determined, get ready, because I'm gonna come. What if I, I have thought about like what if I just pivoted like just to something totally fucking random, like totally not tank related at all. Like I just like hey guys, I'm a fucking tree YouTuber now. Like and now we talk about trees on this channel. What if I just did a Total 180. I think for a stream that would be hilarious. Or to do something on the Discord. Edit OnlyFans when? I don't, dude. I'll do it, man. I'll do it one day. But you're not getting feet pics. I will literally, I'll give you literally anything else. But I will not give you feet. Tree enthusiast reacts to trees from Warcraft 3. <laughs> dude, wait a minute. That's actually such a banger idea. Sorry, guys. It's my cat. Sorry, guys. It's my brother. He's playing the organ in the background. I keep telling him to stop. He's just like, he's just so in love with that damn thing. Well, I did, I had a panic attack the first time I was on a plane because what I didn't expect, when a plane takes off, you know, like when you're, when you're in an elevator and it goes and you get like that feeling of it, like dropping for a second and then like carrying you up and it, like, it feels very like spongy. The same thing happens in a plane when it takes off. 
And I cannot fucking describe to you having never have been on a plane before and feeling that fucking terrifying. Cause I didn't know. I was like, oh my god, the plane instantly is crashing. <laughs> Cause when when the when a plane takes off and the wheels come off, you want this you want the feeling of going up. But of course, the feeling of going up is it's it's actually all physics based. Cause if the plane goes up, that means that the floor beneath you is rising and inertia, you're staying where you are. So it's really you're staying and the plane takes off, so the plane pushes up against you from underneath to lift you up. But to your brain, to you, it feels like you're like falling and being like squished down. It feels like you're dropping. But in reality, it's actually just the thing lifting you up. Physics, relativity, all that stuff. The four forces, thrust, lift, drag, gravity. Probably that sponginess is the plane pushing down into the tarmac until it gets enough speed. No, it's not. It happens when the plane takes off. Like once you feel the, the nose lifting off, I'm not like whatever you try to tell me you're wrong because I'm always right. So like, don't even bother. Like you guys should honestly just give up. Honestly, we should just stop talking about it. And I'm probably gonna end stream because like I'm kind of bored, you know? I don't really want to talk about it anymore, guys. Might as well not watch the stream, honestly, you guys. There are five forces, the last one being Etta's mother. Hey, what the fuck, man? That's uncalled for. What the fuck are you fucking trying to say? Nah, you know what, guys? I think I think I'm done making good streams. I think I'm I think I'm over it. This is my first time watching your stream. Can't believe it's my last. <laughs> ah. Ma petit chauffeur. No, comrade. There was five forces before the skydiving accident. Yeah, guys, my mom actually died in a skydiving accident, and I would really appreciate it if you didn't talk about it. I get it, guys. Like I get that we're all supposed to like laugh and stuff, but like when you guys are coming after my mom like that, who died in a traffic a, 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 a tragic skydiving traffic accident. Um that's just unforgivable and it's immature. And uh, I think you guys should stop watching my stream like right now, because if you don't, do you guys want me to get my baguette? I'm sorry, that came out of nowhere. What the fuck is it with Etta's mom? She's dead, Norton. Stop joking about it, dude. Well, dinosaurs had to go extinct somehow. <laughs> I think we should quit the mom stuff, guys. No, guys, it, it's my mom did not die in a traffic skydiving accident. It's fine. Etta, what the fuck? What do you mean? What are we not allowed to have hypotheticals on this stream? Is this is this a hypothetical free live stream? I'm sorry, I didn't know. This song is called Seduce Me. Chat, you see me sitting at a bar by myself. I look lonely. What's your opening line? <laughs> M4 Sherman is best tank. That's my five words. That's a good start. You have my attention. In a platonic way? Yeah, like in a dad way. Like you see your dad sitting alone at a bar. The Sherman is hot, but you're hotter. Ooh, that's it. All right, you got me. You got me. M4 Sherman isn't enough for an instant one night stand? No, I'm, I'm afraid not. Yeah, that's... Dad, you're hotter than Hiroshima? That's fucked up. That's fucked up. I'm... I'm, I'm chucking my drink in your face and I'm walking out. That's fucked up. That's negative Riz. That's just negative Riz in general. You're a horrible person and you should feel sorry. I'm just kidding. But no, that wouldn't work on me. <laughs> if Rommel were asked what he would choose, you or a fuel tank, he would harness his Panzer force to the... Corn. that's... I'm sorry, Corn, but I stopped listening halfway through and I'm, I'm I'm ordering another drink, man. I'm sorry, but you lost me. By the way, I hope you know I'm gonna make an Edit 20 dating sim. <laughs> I can't tell if stuff like that, like... I find funny and would love to see, or if it would creep me out. It ain't an armor plate, but it's still eight inches. Whoa, buddy. All right, yeah, you got me. I'm yours for a whole for one whole night. We'll go we'll go eat Taco Bell, and then we'll play uh, we'll play Tank Mechanic Simulator, and then that's it. <laughs> the music. <laughs> POV. You're on a date with Edda 320. So, would you like to talk about tanks? Once you finally you got me alone with you in in your house or whatever. I sit down on the couch and I turn on the chieftain and the, the horns come in. Oh no, he doesn't actually want to fuck. He just wants to talk about tanks. No, no, please. Did you see? There was a new laser pig video uploaded. Would you like to watch it with me? No, no. Right, right behind you. <laughs> Ideal result. I'm not gonna put the mud guards on because I want to see what it looks like without them. I'm a big fan of like Sherman's without uh, the mud guards and stuff. We actually have to. Oh no! Oh, we can actually use it. Whoa! That doesn't make sense. I don't know why it's a circle. It should be a, a block. I'll put this animation box in. All right, we'll stop here. We'll go to the turret. Oh, sorry guys. I just really got it. Oh, there we go. All right. Let's restore this turret. Or should we restore the interior first? Um, I am unsure. Me is unsure. Lol, can I have cheeseburger? Oh, we can't. I, I assume, though, we can't put stuff in that we would have to screw in. Oh, yeah, look at that radio set. Ooh, that looks crunchy. 
Ever play War Thunder with a Calliope? No, because I do not. I don't have War Thunder premium or anything. I have not invested a single penny in my many years, actually, of, of playing War Thunder. The commander is missing a couple things. First of all is the entire linkage system for the commander's override. Uh, I'm not sure where that is in here. It's not here, and it should be, which is literally, it's a lever on the side of the turret that they can pull it, the commander himself can pull it forward or backwards, and it will it'll rotate the turret, which is something that goes so underappreciated and underrated about the Sherman and a lot of other tanks. There were some other tanks in World War II that did it, because if your commander spots a target, I see something to the right, and the commander can just grab the handle and flick it and turn the turret. Once he's kind of gross on target, he can go to the gunner and say, hey, I just pointed you at somewhere, take a look. Now, obviously, for like practical reasons, I doubt that there were any situations where a commander without telling the gunner just randomly grabbed the traverse and pulled it and was like quick quick look over here like i'm sure there was some kind of communication some doctrinal way to communicate to the gunner like hey let go i'm gonna take over turret controls and i'm gonna put you on target and then once you're on target get back in and find adjust but yeah technically there should be that also the spotlight i don't think this tank in particular has the spotlight equipped but the Sherman would have a spotlight on the on the front after november of 43 is when they put the spotlight into production depending on what factory and there should be a mount. It's, I think it's probably right here, maybe. Or it would be, like, over here. There should be a mount for literally just a pistol grip. It's, it's genuinely, like, the pistol grip of, like, a Colt 1911 or whatever. Like, just chopped at the top. And it's just the grip. And it had a little peg at the top. And you could take the spotlight off the, the roof of the turret. And you could plonk it onto that pistol grip. And then the commander had his own little handheld light that he could use to shine around at night or whatever for uh, purposes. Other, otherwise, it's a very, very detailed interior. Like, this looks really good. All around, I think these Sherman models are just really, really detailed. I like them a lot. Yeah, so the, the spotlight, I think like right here is where the spotlight would be. That obviously right there, I think, would be the hole for uh, a Pintle MG mount for like a Browning 30 cal. Uh, depending when the turret was manufactured, even these early 75 turrets would have been adapted, would have had uh, the cupolas would change changed out to have space for like a pencil mounted 30 cal or something, or even a 50. I'm a free to play War Thunder player. Can you pray for me? I pray for you every day. You just don't know it. I mean, I haven't, I have not touched War Thunder since, I mean, technically speaking, I touched it, I think two or three days before the strike and before I put out my video on the War Thunder situation. I haven't really like gotten in and played the game in over a year well over a year just it's just stopped being fun now i do think the economy changes that they've proposed like are really good and i think that if they all get implemented as gaijin said that they would um i actually do think they could get me back i also there's i've said it before but there's a couple of things there's a couple of uh milestones we have to reach on this channel before i start playing war thunder especially like on stream and whatnot what is the ring on the top of the mantlet it's to hold up the linkage for so the way the t-34 rocket apparatus on the top of the tank works is it's literally a direct linkage to the barrel so that when the barrel elevates up and down the linkage pushes up and down on the the t-34 rocket uh apparatus on top as well so you literally elevate the rocket pods by elevating the gun itself yeah the generator is here so this is these are like the alternators for the tank that's cool that makes sense and that's why it's got a v-belt on it i see i see i see yes that makes perfect sense because your alternator is going to your alternator is going to have to be a part of that of the belt like the belt's going to have to wrap around the alternator because the belt driving and spinning the alternator is what charges it and then that would have been that in there would have been boxes of 30 cal you can see in the forgotten weapons video all the guns on the sherman tank when he fires the 30 he's down in the space you can see he, he points out the rounds that would go there so you probably put like your blankets and because like crews carried a lot of stuff with them uh lindy beige in a video with the chieftain they're in a uh, churchill tank and Lindy Beige pulls out like a big list of all the stuff that like a, t a, a Churchill crew was expected to carry with them into the tank. And it's a big fucking list. That is just a box standard M4 Sherman. It's still missing obviously a good couple parts, but that's by design. Look at that. That's cool, man. That's sick. It looks really good. Oh yeah, look at this. Oh, I love it. In I like it in this state, man. I just like, I like the missing. I think not only are side skirts not hot on tanks, but specifically, I actually like tanks that originally had side skirts and now they're not there. Like the Centurion, the iconic, like go-to Centurion image that we all have in our heads has side skirts. So when it doesn't have side skirts, it looks even better. Same thing with like the Panther. Panther is very famous for having those side skirts. And so when it doesn't have them, it looks even better. Okay, so let's do this, right? Let's do engine. Nothing, okay. Whoa, there it is. Engine. It doesn't quite sound right, and the exhaust is in the total wrong place. I don't know what's wrong with the smoke, but... Ooh, oh my goodness, that is a low frame rate periscope view. But I mean, hey, at least it has the periscope view. I mean, that's cool. 
cool. Wait, I think I can also control the tank from any position. Yes, yeah, so that's what the gunner would see. That's so cool. It's not quite right though, because it is a normal block periscope, but then on the right, there is a magnified like tube that you can look through. So there's like a by three optical sight right here, which is really cool and super, I'm pretty sure that's like, I'm pretty confident in saying that's like Sherman specific, like no other tank does that. Suspension is a little bit stiff, but uh, that's okay. It also, it, it does not sound at all like the the Continental Radial in the Sherman. It sounds a little too deep, sounds a little too meaty. Ah, we did it, chat. TBH driving in this game looks awful. Yeah, it's it's definitely not as like tight as a lot of other games that I've uh, I've driven tanks in. I've seen some people in the reviews for this game trashing and being like, the devs are money hungry because they keep locking, they got all these tanks they're locking behind paid DLC. And it's like, yeah, but you know, they're an indie game. They like, they, probably don't make that much money like this game probably is not selling in droves so but i mean hey i, I was willing to pay for this the sherman dlc i think people got mad because like i think they put the mouse behind the dlc and of course the mouse is everyone's favorite tank so they got people got pissed i don't know i don't i, I personally don't think it's that big of an issue we have a 100 percent finished fully restored tanku <laughs> Woo! look at this thing it's worth 141 grand and we got the Calliope. So uh, this is it. This was basically what we set out to do today on, on, on the live stream, the other 20 live stream. Anyway, y'all, good night. I'm gonna end the stream. Peace out, have a good night, and uh, don't get yourselves killed uh, because I'll, I need you for the next one. Don't, don't go and get yourselves killed because I need you for the next stream, okay? I need you specifically, I need you for the next stream, okay? So you better be there. Bye, game over.